the, the Mac Daddy companies like Gibson and Fender, I think their quality control has uh, really suffered a lot lately. And um, and not, I'm, I don't, I'm not here to dog other companies, but I picked up like, like I know the difference. I know when a Les Paul is amazing, and I know when it's a dud, and something went wrong at the factory. But somebody out there that doesn't know the difference is gonna spend $4,000 on that dud, because they don't know any better, and that kind of bugs me a little bit. But um, I, I went with Framus because I went to the factory and I was completely blown away. And uh, they made my dream guitar in two days. And I'm still bitching about the volume pots because I ride the volume pot a lot. And they're like, man, nobody else does that. And I'm like, I don't care, man. You get better volume pots. And they're like, I, I mean, I'm complaining about a guitar that I get for free. But do you want your volume pot to die when you're doing the solo living on a prayer in front of 20,000 people? No. I'm in the mega band, man. Fix that volume pot. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, sir. Rush, sure. So, other than David Bryant, who's some of your favorite keyboard players? So, who are some of your favorite keyboard players? Some of my favorite what? Keyboards, keyboard players. David Bryant? <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. I'm not saying that because he's my buddy and we're in a band together. That guy's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Not, not only as a writer, but his technique and everything is fantastic. So I'm spoiled. Everybody else sucks. <laughs> no, everybody else is, is programmed. Like when you go see Muse and they got that keyboard player, he's awesome because he's recorded. But I love Muse Live anyways. But um, I don't, I'm not, I mean, John Lord, you know, Deep Purple was like the best at what they did. So John Lord. And Richie Blackmore and how they complemented each other. I love that. Classic rock stuff. Definitely. Good question. Yes? So, obviously you've uh, done a lot of stuff over the years with Triumph, with the drills. Uh, what made you decide after filling in for Richie on the, uh, Because We Can to to stay with Bon Jovi? I didn't decide. <laughs> <laughs> I got told. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Anybody? Yes. Yes. When, hey, man. You What's your name? Jonathan. What? Jonathan. And how old are you? He's 11 on Tuesday. You can be 11 on Tuesday? Happy birthday, man. Right on. He broke his arm yesterday. He what? He broke his arm yesterday. Playing guitar. Get out. <laughs> and he still made it. And? Your um, question. When did you first start playing the guitar? I was five. But, um... It was, all, it, was lot, it was very chordal. I didn't know what the solos were because there was no YouTube and there wasn't any MTV and stuff like that. So it was very, like I learned Elvis Presley songs and, uh, and you know, my dad got me up. This is, this is when the bug bit. I got up at a, a Greek wedding when there was like 400 people there and I sang Blue Suede Shoes and Teddy Bear with me and the guitar. And uh, I was eight. And that was one of the, that's the, that was the moment of, this is awesome. <laughs> And, uh, and then, for, you know, talent shows at school. And then when I was 11, I learned what solos were. And I started playing solos, and that was it. And then when I was 14, I learned about Eddie Van Halen, and then it was all over. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. <laughs> Good question. Anybody? Yes. Um, you want to what? Uh. <laughs> you want to give that to me? Seriously? Can you let her up? <laughs> What's your name? What is it? I'm deaf. I'll give you a hint. Come on. Tell me what you uh, Sinead? Like the singer? Tell her. Come on, this is. You made that guitar play? Mm -hmm. This is some Christmas music, also. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is like a maze. Hold on. You hold it? You hold it? I'm going to take a selfie. Yeah, come here. Um, this is amazing. That's so sweet. Okay, hold it up. Can you hold it up? <laughs> Alright. This is the cutest thing ever. There you go. <laughs> I'm gonna give him another one, okay? <laughs> and a backup. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful smile, too. Hey, for future notice, these 
fit these pack really well when you gotta go home. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I got you something. It's a it's this big. <laughs> yeah, shit. <it. laughs> so thank you so much. That's fantastic. I'm blown away. That's really sweet. Um, okay, I'm gonna play this track because I don't want to run out of time. And this is uh, something that was on, uh, on YouTube called Masato Music Awards. And it's, I compiled off a lot of my favorite solos and put it on this. And, uh, and I, think, I think it's good. <coughs> but the levels right?
I do this thing where like forget to breathe and almost pass out. <laughs> You're laughing and me almost passing out. <laughs> Strange crap here. <laughs> There was a couple of outside notes in there. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, so obviously everybody recognizes the solos that are in there before the end, and at the end it's a drill song called um, oh, um, You're Not Happy Till I'm Not Happy. So it's the last jam solo that I recorded on that song. And it was live off the floor, which was really exciting. I think we captured a really cool element of um, just you know, rock and roll and three guys in the studio just playing at the same time like the old days and just capturing magic. So it was really cool. You need something, buddy? You want a juice? <laughs> That's how funny, I like, you guys are like, a, you're like a really good audience, but like, I still have it's some weird stuff. <laughs> okay! Uh, anybody have a question? Yes, yeah, sir. So the great thing we have to ask, how does the bazooki influence your guitar playing? And the guitar playing influence your bazooki playing? It's a one-way street for me. Like, bazooki super duper influenced my guitar playing, but my guitar playing could never influence my bazooki playing. My bazooki playing is very uh, traditional, but what's, what's, when you follow some of the, the, like the Eddie Van Halens of bazooki from the 40s and the 50s, there was a guy, his name was Manoli Shuffy, so he was like the best. And still today, like, I see a lot of bazooki players that are amazing, but he pioneered this whole like picking and attack and uh, very articulate style that uh, that's that's what I learned when I learned bazooki and it was a really long time ago and I'd give you an example but I'm really stuck now <laughs> no it's a, it's a very touchy thing like I go to my mom's house and sometimes I'll, I'll pick up the bazooki at her house um, but it's, it's it's very hard because um, and I'm, I'm a wimp because you know usually something bad happens and you know, not not a bad thing, but a life thing happens, and it's it's best to get back on the horse. But every time I pick up the bazooki, I just have memories of my dad. Okay, that was fucking weird. So, um, but this it's really like it's really like beautiful stuff. Like it's a lot aside from the picking thing. It's like the the harmonic thing, the the mode that is. Greek music is is very classical sounding. It's uh, but there's like a. Let me try and do this with a. Like uh, there's an intro to a song, kind of like. This thing where, you know, when you grow up and you're playing a guitar, and I encourage other young guitar players to play with other guitar players. Because it's good to play with other people to, to get a time thing going. An inner time, an outer time, because you're playing with other people. So that's really good for growing as a player. But then, you know, you're playing with this guy, and he could be better than you, or he could be not as good as you, but 